Furious King. Alright. So, keep having trouble with certain problems, so we keep cycling them through. Uh, here we go again. Uh, the main thing here is uh, writing a rule can be a tricky prospect. Um, I write that formula just right so that it produces those numbers. And other than an arithmetic or geometric sequence, uh, those are our two pretty standard kinds of sequences, and I can give you formulas for those. Uh, but there's not always an easy one. You just kind of have to sit back, look at it, and notice some patterns, try something, have it be slightly off, fix it. Right? It's just it's up to you sometimes. There's not always a formula for you to pound away on until you have the right thing. Okay. It might help to write a sub 1 is 2, a sub 2 is 5, a sub 3 is 10, to see the numbers that you're trying to turn this number into that number. That's exactly what we're trying to get here. A sub 4 is 17, a sub 5 is 26. I just ran through the formula I came up with, and I think I just went off. Right. I just, I just, how do you do this? How do you do like that? Something. Just by doing that. So maybe that's a good idea. This is a teeny tiny bit part of your grade here, but it's helpful. Because now you see what? A sub n is what? How'd you come up with that? Like, what, what about writing it that way helped you to see it? Just divine inspiration. It just came down. I just realized my formula works for the first, like, two numbers, and it doesn't work for me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what, what was yours? Two times two n plus one. Two times. And I realize it only works for five. Two n plus no, one? Like yeah. that? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> uh, it only works for five. I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> two n plus one. Well, I think it works for five. It doesn't work for five because this, this <laughs> will always be divisible by two. So it doesn't work for five. Oops. <laughs> will it ever work? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I feel like Connor. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Confident in, in the self actualized? No, that's not the words I was going for. No. <laughs> well, n squared plus one. Is there some magic way that I could get you to come up with that? Uh, maybe. Maybe we could make up a new kind of sequence that is. Uh, when you have something squared plus something else. Maybe there could be some kind of a formula. We look out for that pattern and we be able to plug the numbers in, but you know, at some point we stop having a, a certain kind of uh, sequence that we can just plug numbers into a formula for. Uh, we just have to think it through. And it is something you're asked to do. Um, and really, I, I'm asking you to do it. Matt really asks you to do it all the time. You know, look at the situation, think it through, uh, apply the things that you know, try things that, that don't work, uh, adjust them and fix them. Well, trying things that don't work isn't required. Uh, it pretty much is. But you could do it without doing it. Doubtful. Very doubtful. Okay, so now we're going to write this sum using summation notation. That's the big key thing. That's the thing you can have trouble with. Remembering that I'm not asking you to add them together. I'm not asking you to um, so the thing that I've been seeing. Um, you know, like just write a rule, like this rule. I'm asking you to write it in summation notation. What does summation notation mean? What's the big thing in your face that you know you're looking at? Sigma. Sigma. That's an awesome letter. Sigma, right? And something goes down here, right? Can we? You can almost always put I equals one there. Because it's almost always up to you where you start. You start at the first term. Yeah, if it's up to you, probably you should, because that'd be the easiest thing to do, right? Uh, you can start at the zeroth term if you wanted to. Don't rule against that. You can start at the negative fifth term. That would be kind of weird. Right? As long as we follow that pattern, right? If we started at a sub zero, this would be a sub one, two, and three. Wait, wait, wait. What about negative five? Can you like point something like five point four? No. 
<laughs> that would make sense. Uh, a sub negative 5, a sub negative 4, a sub negative 3, a sub negative 2. Just as long as when you plug that number, that index, that number that's down below that sub number, into your rule, they get all the numbers they just But let's start at 1, because that just makes more sense. Let's start at a sub 1. And we go to a sub 4. four. We go from a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. There's most of it taken care of. Um, of course, it's the easiest part. Right? We write the sigma, we write where we start, where we end. And what goes right here? The rule. You gotta figure out the rule of the formula for producing those four numbers. As long as your rule makes those four in order, when you plug in one, two, three, and four, you got a rule that works. Even if it looks crazy and has lots of weird operations in it, if it can produce those numbers, then, then it works. But there definitely is a most straightforward so what kind of series is this? Arithmetic. Arithmetic. You add, what do you add? Six. Add six. You can always add six times ten minus one. Right? If it's arithmetic, you add that number times ten minus one, and you start where? One. Which is seven. Seven. The number seven. A sub one. Yeah, the number seven. Seven plus six times ten minus one. Or you can distribute and combine like terms. Instead of writing 7 plus 6 times n minus 1, after you distribute the 6, you can get 1 plus 6n. Either one of those I'd be happy with. The only last thing, and I'm, I'm not going to split hairs over this, but this should be i. We're really letting i be equal to 1, we're letting i be equal to 2, and then 3, and then lastly 4. Yeah, I'm not add, asking you to add it together, I'm not asking you to use the formula, I'm asking you to just write it in summation notation. Write it. Any questions? Okay. No questions. Here we go. No questions. I love questions. Especially questions that start with why. Uh, write a rule for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. It's very important that I tell you it's arithmetic, but I don't tell you what kind of sequence it is, or I don't tell you what the pattern is. There's no way to do this. Well, if there is, it would just take a long time. And no, there's no one way to do it, then. It would, it would just be a crazy, all over the place, free for all. But it's possible. You could do it. But I couldn't tell you that you were right or wrong. Unless it worked. Yeah. Sure. So let's write a rule, given that it's an arithmetic sequence meaning that to get from one number to another in an arithmetic sequence you would do what? Arithmetic. Add You would add You don't even have to worry about what it is exactly right now. But if we start at a sub 25, and we go up to a sub 26, we'll do so by adding whatever d is. And if we go to a sub 27, then we'll add another d. And we'll add another one, another one, another one, until we get to a sub 37. And that'll take us from 219 to number 219. We add D, add D, add D, add D, add D uh, a bunch of times and get to 327. Now we should be able to create a relationship between 219 and D at 327. I take 219 and I add D once, twice, three, four, five, how many times all the way up to seven. Well, we start at the 25th one. If you get to the 37th, how many times do we add D? 12. 12 times? Plus 12 Ds, right? Plus D 12 times, you give us 327. So subtract 290. Uh huh. 12 D equals 1. So then we divide by 12, D equals 9. That's very important. The thing we're keeping in mind is that we know for arithmetic sequences, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times D. So now we know D. Put that guy right there. We just need to figure out 
figure out what a sub 1 is. Which perpetually flat by 9. Say what? And just subtract 9 until you get down to 1. Subtract 9 from what? 25. No. From the number. So 219 minus 9. How many times can we subtract 9 to get down to the first term? 24 times. 24 times to get from the 25th to the first term. So minus 24 times 9, that should get us to a sub 1. 3. So now a sub 1 is 3. We have all pieces. A sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, which is 9. We distribute the 9, we get negative 9. 3 minus 9 is negative 6 <coughs> plus 9 times Geometric sequence. So I told you it's geometric, which is very important. So you don't know how to get from one term to the next. How do we get from one term to the next in a geometric sequence? Well, this one's pretty simple. I tell you the first term. Clearly, you can uh, deduce what the R is. And we know that for geometric sequences, the formula is there on the front page. A sub n equals a sub 1 times R to the n minus 1. So 3 times 7. 3 times what? 7. 7, you notice 3 times 7 is 21. 21 times 7 is 147. Good, yeah. Pretty straightforward. See, A sub 1 is sitting right there, and R, not too difficult to figure it out. Same thing for this one. We need to find R, and we need to find A sub 1. Real similar to. This guy right here, where we're given two terms in an arithmetic sequence. We add D a bunch of times to get from one term way over here to one term way up here. But here we don't add, right? We do what again? Multiply. 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 Right, so we're going to multiply by something to get to A sub 7, and then multiply by something to get to A sub 8, and then multiply by something to get to A sub 9. And times R, times R, times R. Just like we made an equation here, 219, right? Starting at 219, adding 12 Ds, we get to 327. Here we start at 39 and do what? What? Multiply. Okay, we multiply. Multiply by 3. 3 Ds. R. R times R times R, so it would be to the third. 3R would be R plus R plus R. So multiply by R, multiply by R again, multiply by R again, that'd be R to the third. That should get us all the way to 1,053. Or R plus 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 R Three times three is three plus three is three. So it would be ten. Three times three times three would be three plus 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 three. So our problem that comes is that two to the third is two times two times two. So I know how many times to add two to itself, but when it's r, it's r times r times r. So I don't know to do r plus r plus r plus. I don't know how many r's to add together because I don't know how big r is. Here I know this is, 2 times 2 is 2 plus 2, right? And then that many times, so plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus, no. no. So 2 plus 2, 2 times, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. I don't know what to do with R. I don't know if that's, if this is 
r plus r? Is r plus r plus r plus r plus r? Because I don't know what r is. Is it a thing? I only know to write 2 plus 2 because it's 2 times 2, which means 2 twos add together. Anyway, Gordon is talking about a conversation we had about how all of, all of math comes down to addition and subtraction. No, just addition. Yeah, of negative numbers as well. How do we get r by itself? Okay, so r cubed is 7 and then this. Right, how do we get r by itself? Third root. Root. root, yes, indeed. Frustrating. R is three. That's a fun word. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, so R is three. We're not done yet though. We need to know a sub one. How are we gonna get a sub one? Divide thirty-nine by three. Take thirty-nine and go back by division, divide by three, divide by three, divide by three. How many times are we gonna divide by three? Five times. So if we take 39 and we divide it by 3, and then divide it by 3, divide it by 3, divide it by 3, and divide it five times, divide by 3, 2 to the fifth. Factors of 13 are 1 and 13. 81 doesn't have any factors of 1. Well, but it doesn't have any factors of 13. So that's as simplified as possible. That's a sub 1. So a sub n is equal to 13, 13 over 81 times 3 to the n minus 1. Last one, find the sum of this geometric sequence or series. Because it's a geometric, because it's geometric, we're looking for the sum of the first n terms. We have a nifty little formula. For arithmetic geometric series, we have formulas to find their sums. The formula for the geometric is s sub n equals a sub so 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So this is s sub what? Sum of the first five. five. A sub 1? A sub 1. 3. We put a 1 in there. 1 minus 1 is 0. 4 to 0 is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. So minus what's r? What? Four. Four. It's four. Two to the fifth over one. One minus four is negative three. One negative one times one minus four to the fifth. That's four. That's four. Gets a lot of use. Negative one times one minus what's four to the fifth? One thousand. One thousand. Oh yes. Um, so negative one times negative one thousand and twenty-three. One thousand and twenty-three. The sum of that geometric sequence. The first line. Could the sum of the geometric sequence be negative? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'd have to have some negative numbers involved, right? Can't have a bunch of positive numbers and get a negative. No, number. no, I heard that. That damn is it. You agreed or something? Agreed. Are we agreed? They have to have negative numbers. Okay. Which means that either R needs to be negative, or majority of the numbers need to be well. There needs to be more negative than positive numbers in this series. Either R needs to be negative or the beginning term needs to be negative, right, or both. 
possibly get a sun and negative. But this one will never go negative because we start with positive three, multiply by positive four. We'll just So we have Ritmulter as is negative one. Um, no, even then, no. Not for this one. If I have negative one, then uh, we get negative two, and four to the negative two is just one over four squared. Remember negative x ones? Yes. Yes. Um, all right, so we got the uh, rules for as many sequences. The Sums that are as many sequences, a series, some geometric, rules from geometric. Any questions about any of that? Let's take a test. No test. There's no test for this chapter? No test today. Is there one next time? No. Everybody's good? You ready to move on? Okay. We'll move on. We'll move on to 12.4. So, so far we have been finding uh, sums of geometric series, um, and we're going to keep going with geometric series. We're not going to get in this section where we've got arithmetic series. So specifically geometric. The question here is, you might want to get out your paper, and pencil, we'll give you a second to get ready to take some notes. Notes are good. Good ideas. Sometimes. In a fight between me and Connor, who would win? So if I beat up Connor, you wouldn't care? I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care about who won or not. I wouldn't care if you guys got to fight. It would be very sad. You guys are an example for everyone. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, if we are, it's probably a really bad just not here. So this is a geometric series. We'll go ahead and take this one and talk about it. And the question here is not what will happen if we add up the first five, or the first seven, or the first 12, but if we add up an infinite string of, of the terms in this geometric series. Then why does the just be infinity? Well, that's a good, that's a good uh, well, it's an assertion. We, you're saying something, at least. Are you saying my assertion is wrong? No. Are you saying it's right? Let's investigate. Okay, let's investigate. Let's investigate whether or not Gordon is right. Gordon says that the if we just keep adding up an infinite uh, number of these terms, the terms in this series, that it'll just go off to infinity. I'm kind of inclined to, to agree. Well, I can't go to infinity. So we'll do something called look at the partial sum. So we got the infinite sum that we're asking a question about, and then we'll talk about the partial sum. The partial sum is anything that's less than the infinite sum, okay? And we talk about partial sums like this. We say like the fifth partial sum. So we already did the fifth partial sum in the page before this. If we go from the first term to the fifth, that's called the fifth partial sum. So S sub five is the fifth partial sum. Jake's asleep, so I'll do it. What? Fifth partial sum is the sum of the first five terms of whatever series we're talking about. The S sub 10 is the tenth partial sum. Now I can go back here and, and remind you of the formula. Using the formula, find the tenth partial sum for this geometric series real quick, and uh, we'll see what we think is going to happen. Did, we, Did you just write all of that while I was doing Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. We'll find the T in the sum of the tenth. 
Find an S of 10, you find the 10th partial sum? No. Trevor? Why don't you find S sub 10? Maybe if I replace this 5 with the 10. No, at least 5 with the 10. That 5 with the 10. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. It's cold. We got 1,048,575. So if we go S sub 20, what do you think we're going to get? Double that. You think double that? Mm -hmm. Quadruple that. We're quadrupling. You quadruple? Yes, quadruple. Well, how about his? It's bigger? Can we agree that it would be bigger than that? It's a lot. This yeah. seems pretty obvious, right? I'm asking kind of the same ah, question. It's a half. Huh? It's exponential decay. Um, so, it, like I said, it's kind of a silly question. Why, you know, of course it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Because what kind of numbers are we getting? Like, a sub 10 is bigger than a sub 9, right? So I'm going to take all the numbers from a sub 1 to a sub 9, add them together, and then I add a sub 10, which is a bigger number than that, and so that's just going to be bigger, and then if I add a sub 11, that's going to get bigger, and a sub 12 is going to be bigger. It's, I keep getting bigger numbers, so I'm just going to get a bigger sum, right? Um, what if we didn't have that going on? What if the next number wasn't bigger? At least it would be smaller. Would we have a hope of maybe adding up to something? the next number was at least smaller? Or wouldn't you just, for instance, start going towards negative here? Let's see. Or so we're level off. Of so the thing that we are working with is a geometric series, okay, specifically a geometric series. Um, so let's say I start at 1, and then the next number I'm going to add is a half, and the next number is a fourth, and the next number is an eighth, and you get the idea. And I add up all infinite of the terms in this series, all of them, then what do you think I'll get? Something just a tiny bit more than zero. A tiny bit more than zero? Yes. Well, the number itself that's way out here will be slightly more than zero. But I'm adding it to all of the numbers itself and all the numbers before it. Right? So it should be bigger than one. Yeah. It should be bigger than one and a half. It should be bigger than one and three quarters. It should be bigger than one and seven eighths. Okay? And it should be bigger than so. So it's just going to get closer and closer to two. You think two? Well, no, it would not reach two, but it will get closer and closer to two zero. Okay. Well, let's um, let's look at some partial sums to see if you're right. To see if we're going to get closer and closer to two. Let's look at s sub twenty. Remember that the sum of a geometric series is given by s sub n equals a sub one times one minus r.
let's say it's of one. One. What is R? Half. We're multiplying by a half. One half to the twentieth. Or one minus R, which is half. I'm going to keep this in fractions, so I'm going to take 2 to the 20th and put 1 over that. That's interesting. 4 to the 10th and 2 to the 20th are the same. But 4 is just 2 squared, so 2 squared to the 10th would be 2 to the 20th. Anyway, we got 1 over 1,576 over 1 minus a half. Half. You get common denominators here. So this is going to be 1,048,576 over 1,048,576 minus 1. So what is 1 minus 1 over 1,048,576? One is, if we want a common denominator, it's going to have to be this denominator. One is just going to be this over itself. 0.499. In fraction form. If this one is just this number over itself, we get the common denominator of 1,048,576. 1,048,576. Over 1,048,576. That's, that's equal to one. Minus one will give us a fraction up here of what? There you go. Over one million forty eight thousand five hundred seventy six over one half. So we're dividing by fractions, so we'll multiply this by the reciprocal of that. Five hundred seventy five over one million. 6 times 2 over 1, 2 cancels with that to give us that. Okay. So we've got 1,048,575 over 524,288. We've added up how many terms? What if we add up infinite terms? It's n. It's what? E. No. Well, the partial sums, if we want s sub 40, what do you think? We probably get 1.999, I don't know, like 12 nines or something. And then maybe an 8 sub 4 or something. And if we went to 50 terms, we would get more nines. We get closer and closer and closer to two. But if we added up an infinite series of these terms, where each number is half of the one before it, what will we get? Endless loop. Get two. If we do this, start at first. It's like the checkers game. Exactly. Remember the checkers thing we watched? It's exactly yeah. that. Okay. The sum of the weights of the of the of the squares in the bottom row alone add up to two. Okay. So this, if we and this is something that we do right, we write infinity, kind of a funny thing because it's not really a number, but this will be two.
Ow. Hmm? Ow? I said ow. Ow? Sorry. But that's impossible. To add up infinite terms? Yes. It's true. Physically, for a person or a computer or anything to actually add up all of these numbers is impossible. You can't actually do it. You won't actually get two. But the sum of all these infinite terms is two. That's the thing where like the, the human brain just can't make its peace with that a lot of like at least at first. Like, well it can't be two, it'll just be really close to two, because you can't ever add it up, but that's kind of the point. We're not adding them all up, like physically. I'm just saying if you did, if you did add them up forever and ever and ever, which you can do conceptually, theoretically, you get two. It is equal to two. I can add it. It's kind of like saying 0 0.33333 forever is what? One third. One third. It's actually exactly it's the same as that. Not technically quite one third. One third. It is. Because the stop dot dot means threes forever. Never stopping, never the last three, Four. never the next to last Four. three, but threes forever. 0.3 forever is one third. It's like Peter Pan. It just goes on forever. Sure, it's like Peter Pan. It's just like that. This is the Peter Pan of math. Well, one uh, not complete here. explanation of that is well, the numbers that we keep adding on keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So, kind of makes sense that at some point, this fraction that you're adding on to what you already have is so small that you kind of think of it as being negligible. Right? So small that to add it on to what you already have is like, you know, what's the difference, right? So you can kind of think of it like eventually coming down and getting to be one value to the number two. Would it eventually come to or would we have to start by multiplying by a half, 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 and then we get you to be a negative. Right? You know, this is smaller, smaller, smaller. It's unbelievably smaller. I never negative. Negative zero. One third the second, second one sixty-four. So the bottom number gets infinitely big, but the numerator stays identical. Uh -huh. So it can't go into negative numbers because you can't get negative numbers by multiplying. So this will happen for any geometric series. With a, a special condition. What's the difference between this series and this one? Why did this one go off to infinity and this one is two? You multiply by a fraction, a fraction that's less than one. Because right, three halves is a fraction, but that would make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So this one, what you're multiplying by is one half, it's less than one. But here, what you're multiplying by is four. Of course the number's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you're multiplying by something that is going to make the next number smaller, and the number after that's smaller than that, it's smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, but you're then, still adding them on. Yeah. And for a geometric series, only for geometric, well not only, but for right now, we're specifically talking about a geometric series. Now, what if we were subtracting those numbers? We'll talk about that. Um, so r is less than 1. If r is less than 1, then the, the series converges. As in, it comes in at 0? Well, this one before here comes in at 2, converges to 2. The sum converges to 2. So, so the series converges if r is less than 1. Or really, if r is between 1 and negative 1. So what we could say is that the absolute value of r is less than 1. So r could be 1 half, it could be negative 3 fourths, it could be negative 5 sixths, it could be 7 eighths, point 0.9 repeating. 0.9 repeating. Um, 
So if r is less than one, or if, if uh, the absolute value of r is is less than one, which means r is between negative one and one, then the series will converge. Even if what converge? So this converges to two. The series converges to two. It like zeroes in on turns okay. together. Yeah. This one right, yeah. does not do that. It diverges. So if the half was ever like point zero zero one more than a half, the point nines would all like round, go up and make it. I don't know what you're saying. I'm saying, saying like a half is like point five, right? So if it was ever like if you divide by point five every single time, but if one time you divide by like point five one, it would suddenly make it two. Because remember, r in a geometric series is the number that you're multiplying by to get the next number. So, this geometric series converges because the numbers that I get, the next number that I get, is smaller than the one before it. And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. You kind of think of it as, as we get farther and farther and farther down the line, the numbers are so tiny that adding them on is so minimal that you might as well say, like, oh, R is the common ratio, R is the number that you multiply by. So I multiply by a half, multiply by a half, by a half, by a half, by a half, is the number that you multiply by to get the next number. Uh, okay. okay? So I want you to, I should have written these with plus signs between them. Five plus a negative three plus nine fifths plus a negative three fifths. Because goes back to the that always goes back to the addition. Um, I'm going to add up these forever. I want you to, well, let's start. I'm going to kind of make it guess by starting out with s sub 10. We start with the 10th partial sum. There's a formula, right? s sub n equals a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the over 1 minus r. Yeah, it's a 1, it's right there. You gotta figure out what r is. One thing I can point out about r is that we multiply by r and we get a negative. Multiply by r again and then we get a positive. So it has to be a negative number. It has to be a negative r. Whatever r is, you multiply 5 by r and get negative. Times three. negative 3 fifths. Or you can negative. Maybe three fifths. I suppose. We'll leave three fifths. If we take big powers, then we like, don't get these like model one model decimals. We just get a crazy fraction of that. What crazy, crazy decimals give us the two?
fraction in the denominator? How's it double fraction? Since you're subtracting a negative number, when you'll be one plus something? Down here, yeah. No, on the top. Well, this wouldn't be negative. First, we take the negative to the power of 10. When you take a negative to the even power, this will come out to be a positive number. When we get to the, the point we have 3 to the 10th over 5 to the 10th, and since this is an even power like we just talked about, this is going to be a positive number. We're going to take negative 3 fifths to the positive 10. We'll have 1 minus that. Get the common denominator. The denominator is going to be this 9,765,625. So 1 is just going to be that over itself. So we're going to take 9,765,625 minus 59,049. And we get 9,765,576. Then we divide by 8 fifths, we multiply by 5 eighths. Let's simplify if we want to. <laughs> 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 what? 
is an x, like as a variable, as a, we can plug anything we want in there, okay? Right now, x is worth something in my calculator, and I don't know. There's an x right here. <laughs> I don't know what that x is worth right now, but it's stored in my calculator as something. Maybe you know how to find that. How do you find that one x? I did it right. I know, but like, I don't know what it is. Oh, you just press x in this main screen and press enter. Wait, 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 I know what I did. I don't know how to change it, though. I'll show you. Okay, so first, uh, oh, it should be, this should be raised to the x power. Okay, so here we have 1 minus negative 3 fifths to the x. And then we'll divide that by, divide that by. I got wrong. Well, that denominator is always going to be 8 fifths. All right. So like I said, I don't know what x is, so I need to tell x what to be, and then I need to do this again. Uh, what does go to mean? You need to show you to tell me what my error is. Uh, 1 minus That's negative 3 fifths. x. Okay, maybe x is too big. x. I found my error. Let's see, let's do 20, store that as x. Enter. Bring it back up. Try again. X. I think that's cheese. How do you tell what X is? Okay, now I know how to change it. If I want to change X, I take 10, store. This, this little guy with an arrow to the right as X. That's what that means. Where's the X button? I'm right so here. happy right now. Let's do it with that. 3.1061043. 10, store it. X equals okay. add. Down. Uh, so happy. If I let x be 50, I know. 
3.125. Okay, this is remarkable. <laughs> I like it always irritated me when I was like seven and I was playing with the calculator and I didn't know what a button did and I like pushed it and it did something completely weird and now I know what that button does. Um, so three and one eighth. Seems like it's getting closer and closer and closer to three and one eighth. Right? Okay. Well, as I take higher and higher partial sums, like the 50th partial sum or the 100th partial sum, or so on and so on and so on, I let this number be bigger and bigger and bigger. The only thing that changes is that right there. What do you think is going to happen when I take a number that's smaller than 1? and raise it to a big power. What kind of a number do you think I'll get? Super small, right? I'm taking 3 fifths times 3 fifths. Well, that's going to be 3 fifths of 3 fifths, which is smaller than 3 fifths. Multiply by another 3 fifths, smaller still. Multiply by 3 fifths, even smaller. What? So on and so forth. And so on and so forth. OK? And eventually, this will be so small, it'll be how big? Close to zero. zero. Nearly zero. So if I, if I let this number 20 go off to infinity, okay, we can kind of just say this will be 0. And what will be left up in the numerator if this is 0? Just a 1. 1 minus 0. A 1. Over 1 minus negative 3 fifths. Okay. So what's the answer? So as n goes to infinity, we can kind of say this is so small, it's 0 times 1 over 1 plus, well, it's like an 8 fifths. Let's save ourselves some time. Equals 5 times 5 eighths to 25 eighths. And three more 3 and 1 eighth, 3.125. So we can multiply by infinity. We can't multiply by infinity, but we can take it to the infinity. Power. And when you take a number that's smaller than 1 to the infinity power, we can theoretically make it infinity. Yes. Which is but theoretically so close to 0, it's the same It's kind of like going to zero. zero. So for a geometric it's series, it could be the end of infinity. For a geometric series where the absolute value of r is less than 1, the sum of n when n goes to infinity. Infinite sum. So the a sub 1 times just 1 over 1 minus r. Okay, so let's find the sum of this infinite geometric. Somebody give me an infinite geometric, or a, a geometric series for the beginning term, of course, that has an r that's less than 1. And R is not zero. One third. So that R be one third. Okay, and we give us a term to start on. A sub one. What is? Give me an A sub one. Three. three. Okay, so we'll start with three multiplied by one third. We're gonna add these together. So three times one third is one one plus one third plus one ninth. 1 over 27, plus 1 over 81, dot, dot, dot. Okay. Is it a geometric series? Is r between 1 and negative 1? Then we can use this. We're going to add up an infinite number of terms. We can use this formula. So s, let's just write infinity, okay? even though it's technically wrong. But what we're saying is we're going to use the infinite terms. a sub 1. Why is it technically wrong? Just this is supposed to be a number. And infinity is not a number. Why is it supposed to be a number? Can we make it whatever we want because we are doing the math one? I can't argue with that. Sure, we can do that. Because we are there's two thirds. We can we can each do math however yes. we want. We only learn this kind of math so that we can just talk about math with each other. 
start an act and speak. No one's listening to you anymore. No. I, I don't I talk about. I'm listening. Never mind. Never mind. Some people. Thank you. you. He's very inspirational. I guess I'm trying to say thank you. Nine halves. <laughs> okay. I know Free Gallery. The clocks are going to go past what it normally looks like it goes to because the clocks haven't. Well, it's two o'clock. Fixed yet. themselves yet. Miss mm. Reed's clock. Can I check the actual time? I'm not going to get through. I'm not going to get through. Don't go. 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 Uh, right above the answer, how do you put the clocks here? There? Yeah. So we got one divided by two thirds, so take one multiplied by the circle. Oh, okay. All right, so now we're going to use the sum of infinite geometric series to do something kind of neat, which is any repeating decimal, any decimal that repeats in any way forever, we can write as the sum of a geometric series and uh, get the fraction that represents that decimal. So let's start with one that we know and just confirm that it's true and that our, 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 our process works. Yeah, let's start with that one. 0.3 forever, let's confirm that it is what? One third. One third is a fraction. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is write it as the sum of an geometric series, which means we have to write as a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and so on. And then we have to figure out what r is. So here's the trick. Whatever number it is that's repeating, 3, or what could be repeating is 175. Like 175, 175, 175, 175, 175, 175. It'll work for that too. Let's do it with 3 first. We got 0 0.3 uh, plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003 plus 0.0003. You get the idea? So what am I multiplying 3 by? Yes. Yeah. Let's represent it as, uh, as, a, as a fraction. It'll become a little bit more obvious. So this is the first, second, third, fourth term, so on. So the first term is, what is a fraction? 1 third. 0.3? 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 3 over 10. And this would be three over hundred. Three over a thousand. Three over ten thousand. Yeah. We don't need a common denominator. We need to figure out what do we multiply three tenths by to get three hundredths? By three hundredths by to get three thousandths. What's that? What's the question? What do we multiply three tenths by to get three over one hundred? Three over 100 by to get three. And one over That's ten. One over ten. So r equals one over ten. If I keep multiplying this by one over ten, will I get the next logical term? Mm -hmm. Three over a hundred thousand, three over a million, three over and so on and so on and so on. Okay. So this is an infinite, infinite, infinite number of threes, infinite geometric series where a sub one is point three, or three tenths, and r is one tenth. So s sub n equals a sub one times 1 over 1 minus r. So that's 3 tenths times 1 over 1 minus 1 tenth. 3 tenths times 1 over 9 tenths. That's 3 tenths times the reciprocal of 9 tenths is 10 ninths. So we get 3 It's not saying that it's close to one-third or that it's just approaching one-third. It is one-third. Point three, an infinite number of threes, forever and ever and ever, is equivalent to one-third. So could we use a geometric sequence to find pi? No. We can't. Well, let's do it with point nine, forever. I told you we would get to that. Wouldn't it be one over nine? No. One over nine would be point one forever. Let's find out. Well, the first nine. Okay, what we have nine tenths, right? Plus nine tenths plus nine hundredths plus nine thousandths plus nine thousandths. And R is equal to one over ten, same as before. S of n, S of let's say infinity equals a sub one, nine tenths, and 
1 over 1 minus 1 10. 9 tenths times 1 over 9 tenths. 9 tenths times 10 ninths. 1. Point nine repeating forever is equal to one. So point nine is one. Yeah. No, point nine forever is one. Yeah. How'd you get one? For R, because what do I multiply nine tenths by to get nine over one hundred? I multiply by one ten. Nine tenths times one over ten is nine over one hundred. <laughs> My head is big.